so hello friends so we will be now be discussing the prc 002-2 standards and in this part 2 we will be discussing about the different type of uh, monitoring disturbance monitoring instruments basically so the first uh, uh, kind of uh, disturbance monitoring instrument that uh, i want to discuss is the fault recorder uh, we have discussed this in brief in the previous videos. So, what basically is a disturbance, uh, digital fault recorder? So, basically, it is an intelligent electronic device that samples the binary data during the power system transient. So, it will uh, you can provide it the analog data, but the mechanism convert it into the binary data uh, binary data format, and uh, for any kind of power system event. Uh, and uh, based on the communication detail it has uh, it retrieves the type of fault what are the different type of uh, disturbance or what is the event uh, sequence that is there how the breaker are operating when the breaker is operating whether the command is executed in timely manner or not whether the protection is able to detect the uh, particular kind of disturbance and operate correctly or not so all these are means uh, details the functioning of different protection relays will be captured by the digital fault recorders so it basically stores the data in the digital format and uh, this is uh, basically the uh, triggering criteria has to be defined for storing of the data basically so it can be that it depend upon the triggering of any it can trigger or depending upon the type of event depending upon the type of parameter depending upon you have setting some threshold value that if the current is above this or the current is below this quantity or the voltage is below this quantity so depending upon different different kind of triggering criteria that you said this uh, fault recorder will be going to detect uh, record the events and uh, this enables the as it's a part of the protection system or it can be a standalone system also and it is basically located in the substation or the generating plants so it basically uh, uh, you can analyze any kind of event that has happened in the system whatever whenever there is a which kind of protection has operated whether the protection operation is correct or not and these basically these recorders basically records the data store the data and later on you can use it using the various tool to analyze these disturbances we will discuss about how we can with what kind of a standard is required so that these uh, means uh, with the help of a common kind of a standard these uh, fault recording instruments of different different uh, vendors can be utilized commonly for analysis of any event so there are basically these fault recorder have three type of recording mechanism how they are going to record the things basically so first is that high speed disturbance recording of the instantaneous uh, waveform signal of both current as well as the voltage so how it is doing that so okay so let us say this is the voltage waveform is there so it is going to capture this one and accordingly let us say there is a current waveform so it was going like this suddenly the fault is there the fault current has increased let us say this is the voltage basically suddenly there is a fault so there is a reduction in the voltage and after clearance of the fault so this voltage is going to means change depending upon the type of fault and the voltage and current so basically it is recording the instantaneous waveform signals of both current and voltage then the second type is that the low speed disturbance recording that is used to capture both long term and short term disturbances in this kind of recording type you can have uh, parameters at relatively high sampling rate that is 1 to 10 waveforms cycles basically so this is a uh, low means one is high speed then you are able to capture entirely the 50 hertz or 60 hertz whatever the uh, depending upon the frequency the signals basically voltage and current signal and you can also have like you kind of recording that let us say only you wanted a rms kind of recording what is the voltage suddenly voltage is dipping and you can also have the suddenly the current current is suddenly increasing so in this way this number of uh, sample that is required will be on the lower side 
So such kind of uh, high sample uh, means uh, high sampling rate uh, recording can also be there. But certainly means here you the purpose of recording this data and purpose of this recording this data will be different. You can capture the dynamics of the fault during this part, how the equipment we have, whether protection has correctly operated or not. And here you can uh, check the system performance basically with the low sampling rate data basically. Then uh, third one is basically this uh, steady state uh, recording. So it captured the minimum, maximum, average value of calculated parameters such as harmonic at relatively low time duration basically. So this is the third kind of thing. So you, we have higher speed. Then we have, you can say that lower speed or you can say that uh, it is uh, basically a mixture of uh, uh, we can utilize it for long term as well as short term disturbance because we are able to capture the fault and we are able also capture to the system prior to the fault is whether it is uh, in uh, um, means the operating condition is good or not. So those kind of things we are able to capture in a stereo state the capturing will be like what kind of harmonics is able to at this point whether this uh, first uh, say second harmonic and uh, during the means uh, charging of the transformer all those kind of capturing and then the whether what was the maximum voltage during this kind of uh, during the entire period of this particular duration what was the maximum minimum voltage so those kind of things can also be there can be done with the uh, recording can be done with the help of the fault recorder then the there are commonly two recording criteria triggering criteria basically you can utilize multiple criteria but mainly this can be subdivided into two kind of things one is that events that the DFR calculates from its input signal. So there will be algorithm. It has some design that okay, if there is a uh, there is a distance protection is uh, for, for, you have to detect it. it is for a transmission line. So it will detect like that. If there is a voltage reduction is there and there is an increase in current and the fault is in the forward direction and it is in some defined zone of zone one. So then uh, it will capture it as like. A, uh, based on the algorithm defined within the that protection devices or based on that it will calculate that it is an event so that uh, the protection device is triggering based on the algorithm that it is having it will trigger that kind of event then the second thing is that it can capture also on the basis of digital signal triggered by the protection equipment okay so let us say if the some uh, let us say this breaker of the this is a substation and the breakers has operated multiple breakers is operating so this is for the these equipment so in those cases based on this break, breaker operation also this with the digital status of this breaker will change so based on that also they can uh, trigger the means recording basically and uh, so coming to the next one you can see that this is a substation complete substation digital fault recorder so it can it basically is used for the uh, recording the entire it means, uh, uh, means whatever the event is happening at the substation level so it gets multiple input from the different, different elements and there can be a standalone digital fault recorder with, that is inbuilt with the protection system itself so you can see these are the some sample kind of uh, fault recorder and uh, this one basically is the fault recording means uh, it is uh, one of the format in which you can see the fault recording so you can see that these are the voltages some voltages are shown then the neutral voltage there then these are the current and then neutral current is there you can have uh, the when the event has triggered these are the digital status you can see so these are the analog quantities these are the digital status basically so you can see that whether the breaker has opened which breaker has opened at what time it has opened so all this you can analyze you can convert it into the rms you can convert it into the waveform wave also and you can further analyze fault location and other details based upon the details based on the available details basically so you uh, there is one query is that uh, um, different vendors will be creating different kind of uh, fault recording equipment so how to standardize that what it is going to record so the there is a standard that has been defined for the digital fault recorder we call it as this means uh, digital fault recorder means basically the standard is uh, ieee 
C37.118 2013. So it is basically IEEE standard for the common format for transient data action because they are recording the transient data basically during the some event is happening at a very high sampling rate. So this uh, in short it is called as com trade format. So for power system events. So in all these uh, whatever the recording devices that you are going to utilize they have to comply with this standard. They have to provide you the data in convert them if they have their own proprietary format also then they are altered also they have to provide this details in the this particular contract format also so that uh, any event can be analyzed by any of the person or any of the with the help of any of the instrument which is able to means read the contract format data so this uh, basically format a specify uh, this basically standard specify the format and content of the dfr data including waveform data phaser data and event data it has the means uh, various the format it, itself it says that what is the way which are the triggering location what is the how the status will be recorded how the waveforms will be recorded what is the frequency uh, nominal frequency for the system how many sample of data is there based on which it uh, performs the converse based algorithm the different analysis tool can perform based on the standard set of data and can produce this kind of waveform that we are observing here okay and this is further this is specified the procedure for recording and storing and retaining of dfr data as well as the requirement of dfr accuracy and performance so this way the all these fault recorder instrument should comply with this standards then uh, the modern digital relay you know that uh, the protection relays basically include already include this dfr function and you can have a standalone dfr function also dfr uh, relay also installed in the substation but uh, means as the protection you know it's a core bug function is the protection part so that you will uh, try to use the means it will be you will try to concise the size of the protection system so that uh, means and it should not be the, the, the digital uh, means whatever the storage capacity it will be limited storage capacity so those kind of things are the uh, basic difference between the if you see a, a separate dfr device compared to the a relay with the dfr function so you can see the you can have very high sampling rate with the dfr device your so standalone dfr device its function is only to store the event basically so detect event a store event so that's why it has a very good storage availability it, you can utilize it separately for the only it is purpose is the uh, basically to uh, store the event itself so you can have a very high sampling rate also then the local storage will be good means compared to the digital, digital means relays with digital functions uh, digital uh, uh, dfr function basically and then the dfr devices can also provide additional functions such as you can monitor other kind of quantities like you can have dynamic system power quality it can be you can use it as a pmu you can utilize the circuit breaker you can you can use it as a cr also different kind of things you can utilize the dfr function basically for a standalone dfr system depending upon what kind of input that you are provide means means uh, providing means what kind of uh, uh, recording capabilities you want in the dfr separate dfr devices so it can act as the so such kind of devices can also act as a pmu also it can act as a system monitor dynamic system monitoring it can act as a fault locator device it can act as a circuit breaker monitoring to so such kind of sequence event recording also so these kind of facilities are available within these so you, they, they can have, do the sampling at very high rate but uh, store the different different data by means of performing the you know the back end algorithm based performing performing the calculation and depending upon that different kind of sets of data is being provided by them and uh, in the one difference is that in the dfr you need to set up triggering criteria while for the protection relay all these are already they do not it means binary signal because already pick up and trip because these are already generated internally in the relays but while you are uh, have to do define for the separate dfr you have to define all this how it is going to detect the event so in short dfr basically it provide a permanent detailed record of all substation activities then it uh, you can have uh, multiple dfrs from the different instrument when there is a fault in the substation and based on the 
complete uh, details that you collect from the substation from the different different element protection relays dfr then you can you can also have a complete visibility of the substation apart from that if separate dfr is there you can again have a complete permanent detailed record of substation activity then uh, record transfer trip and block signal and other messages it provides secure data collection also with uh, also isolating the id networks and apart from that permanent recording of internal protection relays operands and calculation in acr and the uh, fault record basically so and uh, basically you can see that these have a very fairly long lifetime and this uh, it uh, means have a simplified maintenance system and these are extensively used for the substation digital, distributed digital fault recording for monitoring of the system protection performance component in large enterprise wide wide fault and disturbance recording system monitoring of the transient event that is like in case of any field experiment connecting new assets so that's why separate dfr is very means uh, powerful tool for the analyzing of any event however you can certainly uh, if there is a, if uh, it is a requirement then it's okay otherwise you can utilize the different kind of other instruments also as uh, uh, means like the separate uh, protection function also protection relays based uh, digital uh, fault recording function also for monitoring of the event in the system and you can have further additional data which can help you in detecting different different event and have a wide area, wide area monitoring and during any disturbance that we will discuss in the later ones then the second is the sequential event recorder so what is the purpose of sequential event it is basically type of a data acquisition system which is used to which is used to capture the record of occurrence and timing of the event it is typically used in application where precise timing and order of event need to be analyzed so how, how the events is happening which which is operating what whether the breaker is first operating or which protection has operated first and which uh, trip which breaker has operated thereafter how much difference in the breaker operation and the uh, trip uh, command that is generated from the relay all these kind of details is uh, can be provided with the sequential event recorder so it captures the data in a sequential manner with each event being time stamped and stored in memory and it can be retrieved and analyzed to identify the patterns fault or other issues it may be used for variety of sensor and input to capture events such as voltage spike digital signal and analog signals so the standard that is for the sequential event recorded is the IEEE standard 421.9-2019 that is IEEE guide for the application of sequential event recording in the electrical power system monitoring, operation monitoring and analysis. So you need to, these uh, digital uh, sequential event recorder need to follow the guide, this particular IEEE standard. So it what is, what is the help that we get from the sequential event recorder? First is the fault analysis. So ACR can help in identifying the root cause of the fault in power system, such as which breaker has started, the first breaker which trips, which, which is the first protection which operated, and what whether, whether the which uh, with the help means there is equipment failure, whether the protection has correctly operated or not, the breakers has tripped, whether any breaker is having a delayed tripping. So, or any of the poles of the breaker is not tripping. So, this is resulting in the additional protection operation, which protection has failed, whether backup has operated or not. All such kind of details can be provided for the fault analysis based on the sequence. And it, it means multiple sequence of event which are properly time stamped with the GPS. If all if it's a wide disturbance and you get all these details from the different different location, then based on those details, sequential event recorded from different station involved in those wider scale event, you can create the complete uh, story of the entire how the event has started and propagated into the system. Then uh, it also used to monitor the operation of protection relays and other safety devices in protection system. If a fault or any abnormal condition is detected, then the devices will operate to protect the system from damage. So ACR can help in ensure that these devices operate as expected and identify any issue that may be admit to be addressed. So breaker operation that is basically it is talking about. Then the system performance, you can monitor the performance of the system of the, uh, the such as voltage and frequency of electrical signal. By analyzing the timing and sequence of event, we can identify the issues uh, where the system may be experiencing problem and take corrective action. So all these uh, kind of uh, analysis, kind of uh, help that it can provide for the uh, doing the means finding the root cause of the event. 
the third one is the dynamic disturbance recorder so basically how this dynamic disturbance recorder differs with the fault recorders basically so in the fault recorder we were talking about it is able to capture the very high sampling rate data but uh, if you only see the D dfr can also have multiple functions also the, like a substation dfr however are still uh, there is a separate means of if uh, you know means uh, rather than doing going with the high sampling rate if we wanted to analyze the dynamics of the power system not going with the you know means uh, 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 means uh, analyzing the event at the you know means uh, uh, waveform cycle level rather than that we can have analysis on the uh, subsequence level so that's why I means dynamic disturbance recorder devices are in power system to capture the record the data related to dynamic event so like you know means like there is a low frequency oscillation happening in the system so these will be having a range of 0 0.2 to 3 hertz so basically you can have like you know means uh, 1 by third second to basically it will be 2 5 second basically so this will be one cycle will be having 5 second to yeah 1 by 30 0.33 seconds so these are means basically you can easily capture it with some lower sampling rate also but uh, with the help of lower sampling rate further you can capture the different kind of other things also in the system like uh, for analyzing this particular low frequency oscillation you need to capture different kind of quantity in power system and if you are able to capture this quantity from multiple locations then you will be able to trace out the root cause of such kind of low frequency oscillation or such kind of slow phenomena compared to the like the fault phenomena is quite a faster phenomena these kind of oscillation are slower phenomena and in the fault in generally this will be most of the time it will be concentrated into a local area so that substation level or two three substation or adjacent substation up to that it will be localized however these kind of oscillation will not be localized to a substation level it can this kind of issues can be propagated to a wider wider area in the entire power system so that's why it is like uh, written that this event which the dfr is required to uh, record basically it is like low power system oscillation frequency fluctuation voltage fluctuation that occur during the normal operation as a result of disturbances such as a fault or switching operation so fault will be recorded by the dfr uh, so the fault recorders while the uh, consequence of the fault after the fault that there can be swing there can be system oscillation there can be very frequency drop there can be voltage fluctuation all those like uh, kind of things can be captured by the dynamic disturbance recorder so these are designed to capture high speed data that is not typically captured by the other recorder like acr or dfr and they typically sample data at rates of several thousand sample per second allowed for detailed analysis of dynamic behavior of the power system and it can be used for a variety of purpose like system protection stability analysis or post event analysis further it can help in the root cause of disturbance and provide valuable data for the development and testing of the protection system so these are basically you can see that a single kind of recorder nowadays can provide you digital record, fault recording which can be recording at for 0 to 30 second the one file can be 0 to 30 second then it can have a dynamic swing recording same it can have 1 to 30 minutes it can have a sequential event recorder also with 1 millisecond resolution power quality in the samples then you can have a long term recorder also like a SCADA system it can have a continuous disturbance recorder it can act also act as a PMU so with the help with the transition in the technology with the computing facility of power uh, improvement in the computing power recording facility and other kind of development that the one single device can do the function of all these uh, means of starting ranging from the PMU ranging from the fault recorders sequential event recorder this dynamic disturbance recorder power quality monitoring long term trade recording long term recording to the PMU means uh, 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 a SCADA kind of recording all this can be done by a single device itself or which can be utilized for power system monitoring so presently if you are uh, there is no a specific a standard for the dynamic disturbance recorder so you can see that like uh, we have the for the ACR we have for the digital fault recorder so these are basically typically designed to meet various standard rather than single standard various standard related to performance and accuracy of power system monitoring devices what we wanted to monitor based on that what kind of monitoring capabilities required we can utilize it 
So first is that like it can be designed to meet the requirement of IC61850 for communication network and systems in substation. So this is standard basically defines the communication protocols and data models used for substation automation, including the exchange of data between the monitoring devices such as DDRs and other component in the substation. So you can have for the in the SAS substation there is a requirement of this uh, if you wanted to completely monitor the entire power dynamic this uh, substation itself. So in that case you need to follow the 61850 protocols and you can utilize it also like let us say you wanted to use it as a synchrophaser measurement recording then you have to use C37.11. So, okay so here are some of the example of the event that need to be captured basically. So there can be a, like the first is the voltage deviation, the so disturbance that causes a sustained deviation of more than 50% of the voltage. So let us say this is the nominal voltage basically, let us say, uh, and uh, this is like the voltage is like simply, let us say it is 400 kV. So you can see that voltage is continuously RMS voltage we are measuring, then suddenly there is a fault is there. So such kind of voltage deviation or there can be something like that there is a sustained drop in the voltage is there or there can be low voltage situation is there. So in those cases, those kind of things can will be treated as some kind of some event is happening in the system. Then like of the frequency deviation, like you can have uh, the frequency if it is like let us say suddenly a frequency starts falling something where this. So in that case, this is also an event or you can have the frequency suddenly the frequency due to the load loss it starts increasing something like that and then bring back due to the primary response and other responses in the system for the frequency control. Then you can have rate of change of frequency basically so if you have a very large load loss in the system or large generation loss then in that case the frequency fall can be like very severe rather than this kind of frequency fall if the depending upon the system inertia you can have a very significantly high rate of change of frequency with increasing renewable this roco phase suddenly further going to increase so for that you need uh, you know means uh, improving the how you can improve the rate of change of frequency with faster frequency response kind of mechanism introducing with the help of different kind of devices then uh, for the relay operation disturbances that cause protective relay operation let us say there is a line is there and there is a fault is there so this relay will operate this relay will operate both will operate in either zone one or there may be zone one with the uh, you know communication system uh, relay means com uh, communication system based relaying scheme so basically this can be plcc or opgw based relaying scheme pilot wire relaying scheme so they can both operate and uh, the trip the line in the zone one by giving the command to the breakers so such kind of relay operation also can be means these are the events that need to be captured. Then there can be force outages that there is a, some disturbance, significant change in the system is happening due to these kind of things and relating. This is resulting in the protection operation of other devices also. So such this can result in the large generation or load capacity or there can be system separation, islanding can be there and there can be some uncontrolled reactor tripping like the, there is a you know means uh, large MVAR is lost from the system like uh, if synchronous condenser or any statcom or SVC such kind of devices get tripped. So and there can be low frequency electromechanical oscillation also in the system. So for these are the some of the events that need to be captured by that these kind of devices. The these event uh, capturing will help us in uh, proper monitoring of the system uh, and uh, checking the performance of the different protection devices or the various other kind of uh, protection or defense mechanism that has been provided in the system and it will help in taking corrective action if the intended operation is not observed or there is an excess operation has been observed or there is a requirement of change in the protection system philosophy or any kind of other changes that is required for improving the means improving the reliability of the entire power system. So that's all in this part two. We will in the part three, we will cover about the various requirement of PRC 002.